Next on Jonathan Bird's Blue World, Jonathan is investigating a mean-looking fish. Hi, I'm Jonathan Bird, and welcome to my world. My favorite places to dive is Eastport, Maine. The water's cold, but the bottom is covered with an incredible amount of colorful marine life. Eastport is near the Canadian border at the mouth of the Bay of Fundy. The huge tidal range in Eastport means that the water's almost always flowing one way or the other as the tide comes in or goes out. The moving water full of plankton feeds a ton of invertebrates, making the bottom lush. It gives me plenty of things to film on every dive. There's pink soft coral feeding on the plankton. Anemones cling to everything, even an old drain pipe. The lobsters reach epic proportions. And fish thrive like this camouflaged sea raven blending in with the bottom. A shrimp rests on a sponge. And a whelk, a kind of large snail, searches for a meal. Unfortunately, the whelk is about to become dinner for my favorite animal, the Atlantic wolffish. Wolffish might have big teeth, but these fish are no threat to people. They like to eat whelks and crabs. Wolffish often get together in pairs during the summer to lay their eggs. They hang out in the same den under a rock. After the female lays around 10,000 eggs, the male kicks her out and guards the eggs for several months until they hatch. Here you can see the egg mass behind the male, way inside his den. Over the years, I've become friendly with a wolffish I call Gene. He can't resist a whelk or two when I bring them right to his front door. It took me a couple of years to get him comfortable enough with me to come all the way out of his den. Even then, he's pretty skittish. I've heard about Pacific wolffish that are bigger and friendlier, and I want to go meet them. So I'll have to travel from Maine all the way to British Columbia. My journey takes me from Eastport to Vancouver. Next, I have to drive out to Port Hardy where my dive boat awaits. Well, four hours to Port Hardy on the beautiful roads of Vancouver Island. In the drizzling rain, I board the Mamro, my dive boat for the week. Soon, under a clearing sky, we're underway. Captain Dan drives the boat past gorgeous forest wilderness on our way to Clam Cove, where we'll anchor the boat for a few days in search of Pacific wool fields. Pacific wolf eel is the local name for this impressive fish, but it's not an eel at all. It's actually a fish, just like the Atlantic wolf fish. So it should be called a Pacific wolf fish. Whatever you want to call it, I'm going to find one. We depart aboard the skiff for our first dive. I start suiting up in anticipation. The water's 45 degrees, but my dry suit will keep me warm. Now I'm ready. Voila! Ready to dive in the cold Pacific Northwest. My cold water dive gear is bulky and cumbersome, but I'm used to it. Let's go check it out.
Descending through the kelp, I find a world as rich in marine life as Eastport, driven by similar tidal action and nutrients. I swim over the edge of the wall to search for a Pacific wool field. There, sticking just its head out from its den, a fully grown male wolf eel stares at my camera. Nearby, a younger one, with darker coloration, also curious what I'm up to, but not about to come out. Both have prominent teeth, just like the Atlantic wolffish, but they appear just as docile. Soon I turn back to observe the big male, and he starts coming right at me. He's coming out of his den. He's a lot longer than the Atlantic wolffish. I'm not sure what he's up to. He comes up to closely investigate my lens. Maybe he sees his reflection. He lets me hold him in my hand. They told me the Pacific ones were friendly, but this is incredible. I'm beginning to think maybe this fish has been fed quite a bit and he's looking for a handout, but I didn't bring him any food. He tries my arm to see how it tastes, but dry suits apparently aren't very good eating. Before long, he gets the idea that I haven't got anything to eat, so he goes over to see my dive buddy, Tim, who just happens to have brought a snack. Now, I would bet that there's no way a wolf eel would eat a sausage, but as it turns out, they love sausages. Who to thunk? After he gets his snack, the wolf eel heads back to his den, and then I can see why they call them wolf eels. This fish has a body six feet long, and it's more eel-like than fish-like. So why do we call the Atlantic ones fish and the Pacific ones eels? Good question, but they're both fish and probably one of the most interesting fish to interact with in the entire world. No matter what you call them, they're cool. <laughs>